and welcome to Health Matters on Channels Television. We are so glad you could join us. I am Mary Alale Yusuf. Cholera is an acute diarrhea-causing bacterial disease. The bacteria are contracted by ingesting contaminated food or water. This disease, which was first identified in the 19th century, is now endemic in many nations. According to the World Health Organization, every year, there are between 1.3 to 4 million cases of cholera, resulting in 21,000 to 143,000 global deaths, making it a global public health threat. My guest on the show today is a public health physician from the Association of Public Health Physicians of Nigeria, Lagos Chapter. She's also a fellow of the National Postgraduate Medical College of Nigeria, Faculty of Public Health and Community Medicine. Dr. Elo Ukatu, you're welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Mary. You know, we rehash this thing all the time, but it's good to let people know what are cholera symptoms like. What should somebody be looking out for to know that this could be cholera? Okay, well, I'll start by saying that, um, first of all, 75% of those with the infection would not have symptoms. Okay. Now, 80% of those who would have symptoms would only have mild to moderate um, infection or, or mild to moderate disease and then the remaining 20% are those that will come down with severe disease and majority of which is dehydration so we have dehydration that would lead to things like um, sunken eyes they would have um, wrinkling of the skin they would also have things like muscle cramps and weakness they will be vomiting Usually the stool is characteristic. There's vomiting and stooling. That's characteristic of cholera. Um, the stool is usually grayish with um, a, there's flecks of mucus in it, which is the characteristic rice water stool. So that is totally associated with cholera. It's stool, sort of. Yes. You know, and it has mucus in it, and it's popularly called the rice water stool. So that's essentially it. Other symptoms are, you know, things associated with dehydration that could lead to, you know, shock, coma, and even death. Those are those Your symptoms. statistics are very interesting. So let's assume a hundred people have cholera. Seventy-five of them will not even show any symptoms. Mm -hmm. Now we're left with 25. Eighty percent of the 25 mild symptoms. So that means about 20 of them, mild symptoms. Only five people come down with serious symptoms. In the light of all this hidden stuff, you know, the ones that are not showing and the ones that are mild, what's the hope of tackling the, tackling the disease? Still boils down to tackling water and sanitation issues. You know, the root cause of the problem, tackling public sanitation systems, you know, and that's where it all comes, personal hygiene. And then sanitation goes a long way, you know, because that's the root cause of the problem. Because like I said before, the fact that they're not showing symptoms doesn't mean they're not shedding the bacteria in their that's stools. Right. So they're still shedding it into the environment and there's a potential risk of actually spreading the disease. Without knowing. Without knowing it, yes. Okay, so um, now we have these floods. This year alone, people are saying that the reports, the, the reports of possible cholera and actual cholera are more than last year and the year before put together. Mm -hmm. And they attribute it to floods. What, what do we need to do about these floods? We can't stop the rain. But maybe we can stop the floods. If we can't, what can we do about the floods? Well, floods are due to various reasons, heavy rainfall, you know, climate change and all of that, as well as, you know, lack of emergency preparedness systems. So one of the things we need to do is to ensure that emergency um, response systems are put in place. You know, um, again, urbanization, Many times we have pavements all over, so uh, such that surface run of water doesn't have any place to get absorbed into poor drainage systems, and all these things account for the reason as to why floods are on the rise. You know, apart from the climate change and rising sea levels and all of that, so these things, drainage systems have to be put in 
in, in place, um, proper planning, town planning as well, because in building houses and you know cities, proper planning has to come into place to be able to mitigate the effects of um, surface um, runoff water. Let's say um, we have a flooded area and sewage, sewage stuff has mixed up with the flood waters and that has contaminated water that is coming into the house. So like, you know, everything else is on the same level and they've mixed up. Your water coming in through your tap is already contaminated. What does a person do with that water? How do you use it? Or can't it be used? I mean, remember that not everybody is rich. Some people can afford to buy their water, bottled water. Let's cook with bottled water. You know, let's heat bo uh, bottled water for our tea and all that. But not everybody can do that. Can that water be used? Okay, now, this, it's a multi-disciplinary, multi-sectoral approach. The government has its role to play, first of all, in ensuring that houses are connected to sewers and sewerage systems, you know, proper treatment of sewage. Um, in the houses as well, we should ensure that fecal matter are disposed of adequately, you know, properly. They're collected well, disposed of well. We avoid open defecation and things like that. But then, like you say too, at an individual level, boiling water that's used for drinking, for cooking, is essential at an individual level to ensure that you get rid of whatever contaminants are in that water. So okay. that's what can be I'm done. going to let you run through that once more. I want people to hear. 